Everyone likes doing big numbers because doing big numbers is fun. But how do you understand scaling your damage in Diablo 4? Because there's a lot of things you can do, and many of them won't be the most effective choice. Today, I'm going to talk about that by going through the process that I use when comparing different multipliers, because it's about way more than just the numbers. For example, how conditional is it? What's the uptime? And if it is conditional, do you actually care about doing damage when it's active? Because something might be active when you're at low health, which if you're a low life build is good, and if you're not a low life build is really bad. Or something might work really well against crowd controlled enemies. If you're actively crowd controlling enemies frequently as part of your build, that's really strong, especially if you want to set up a burst window, but it doesn't work on bosses until you get to stagger them. So if you have a poor ability to stagger bosses, it might not be a great choice either. The next thing to keep in mind is, does the stat add or multiply? In most cases, stats are additive with themselves, but then do they act on a different stat multiplicatively, or do they act on it additively? And in some cases, multiplicative is better, in other cases, additive is actually better. Don't worry, I'll be mentioning some examples later in the video. Which gets into another point. How does your stat interact with other modifiers? For example, crit damage is pretty darn awesome, but without crit chance, it's pretty darn useless. So you need two modifiers to think about there rather than just one. And last but not least, Blizzard doesn't do a great job of delineating things. In Path of Exile, when something says increased, generally speaking, its behavior is additive, and it's combined with all of your other additive damage modifiers. All increased damage done gets added together. All increased enemy damage taken gets added together. On the other hand, more in Path of Exile multiplies. Now, more multipliers are multiplicative per source, so if you have a source that says something like deal 40% more damage per curse on an enemy and you have three curses on the enemy, that's 120% more damage. But if you have two sources that say deal 40% more damage to cursed enemies, then that's 1 times 1.4 times 1.4. While Diablo 4 treats its damage scaling slightly differently, I do think this is a useful framework to know about because there is a lot of overlap that can be applied. I may lapse into phrases like increased and more because I know Path of Exile very well, but I'll try my best to delineate the behavior, whether it's acting additively or multiplicatively and what it's acting on. Also, quick disclaimer, I'm not really a math guy, but I'm going to be doing my best here. I'm also pretty sure a lot of this is going to change in Season 1. So if you want to know what's happening for Diablo 4's first season, do be sure to get subscribed, maybe leave a like while you're down there, and before I get into things, a special thanks to my patrons and channel members for their continued support. More about how you can support at the end. So number one, how do you know when a modifier's active? Well, increased damage is unconditional. If you do damage, it's increased, therefore it's always active. And as a result of this, most generic increases to damage have a lower value. They're still great due to that unconditionality, but if you're able to meet the condition reliably, then something else could be better. Others are based on an enemy's status. For example, damage to stunned enemies is active when the target's stunned. These effects are often more temporary, but potent, most of the time being two to three times more effective than a less or unconditional value, at least if we're looking at numbers alone. Obviously, how effective they actually are depends on the uptime. If an enemy is stunned for your burst window and dies in the stun, then damage to stunned is up 100% of the time. Whereas if an enemy is stunned, you burst them to maybe half health, well, you still have to go through half of the enemy's health, and if you don't have another way to stun them, you could effectively say it's only up for half the time, thus cutting the value in half. A few more modifiers are based on player status. For example, Imbiber's Glyph, damage when healthy, which is active at 80% life or above. Then there's a few effects with multiple activation conditions. Sorceress's Hoarfrost, for example, is active against both chilled and frozen enemies, and only one of these effects will be active at a given time, but the effect against frozen enemies is far more powerful. This means that if you're chilling frequently, that's good. If you're freezing, that's better. So next up, when is something additive versus multiplicative? I'll start by going over some common sources. Increased damage is additive. In fact, it feels like they copied this straight from PoE, where all of your conditional sources of increased damage, the game checks, is it active? If yes, it adds it and adds it and adds it, and that final value 
is used as a multiplier on your base damage. Now, this doesn't make it inherently bad, but it does mean that because all of the applicable modifiers get totaled before being applied, each individual roll ends up having less potency than if it was a multiplicative effect calculated separately. Think of it this way. If you're going from 500% increased damage to 600%, that's a gain of about 20%, but 500% increased and you deal 100% more, multiplying 500 times two, you now have 1000% or double. Because a lot of your glyphs are giving you 70 to 100 something percent conditional damage and weapon rolls tend to also give quite a lot you'll end up getting a significant amount of increased damage, thus making it less desirable than many other things. But then what's best to stack? Again, I'll use the Sorceress class as an example because it's what I've played the most. Is 12% damage to burning enemies or 30% damage to stunned enemies better? If you're using the Firebolt enchantment, damage to burning is probably up the entire time, making it a really darn reliable multiplier. Whereas damage to stunned is only up when the enemy's stunned. If the enemy is stunned for less than 30% of their health, then it's worse. If you're stunned for 30% of their health or more, I would say it's better to go for damage for stunned to stack as many bonuses as possible because Sork has a lot of conditional damage bonuses. On the other hand, I'm not super familiar with Druid, but I'm going to pretend that Druid doesn't have a lot of conditional modifiers, but they have a lot of really reliable ones and won't be stunning too frequently. Well, in that case, you might want the damage effect that's up the entire time. Let's say damage to poisoned if you're playing a build that's able to reliably inflict poison. So my general rule of thumb is if your build focuses around dealing consistent damage, unconditional increases are better. If your build is about using a bunch of cooldowns and setting up a burst window where you do most of your DPS, conditional damage that meets the conditions your burst window sets up is the superior option. Some examples of increased damage are increased cold damage, fire damage, lightning damage, poison damage, damage with skills, damage to stunned enemies, close enemies, or distant enemies. Now, based on everything I just said, you might be thinking modifiers which combine together additively are automatically weaker, right? No, not necessarily. In the case of increased damage, it is a weaker stat, but that's because the game throws so much of it at you that each individual point isn't as valuable. It's diluted. Think of it as dumping a container of salt into the ocean. It's so diluted that that doesn't really change anything. But if you put that same container of salt into a thimble, that water is going to be saltier than your average Redditor. And the vulnerable damage stat is a perfect example of this. Vulnerable damage is actually stronger because it combines additively. By default, an enemy takes 20% increased damage when they're vulnerable and the Vulnerable Damage stat additively scales this debuff. Because Vulnerable as a whole acts on an enemy's damage taken, that total number after everything adds together does multiply the damage that you deal, making Vulnerable Damage a powerful option for most builds. So much so that a build viability is often determined by its Vulnerable uptime. But why does it matter that it's additive? Well, for example, 20% base and you have 100% increased Vulnerable Damage from four sources for 25% each. You add 20 plus 25, 50, 75, 100, or 120% total. Therefore, you multiply your damage by 2.2. But what if it was multiplicative? The base is still 20% or 0.2. Now it's times 1.25 times 1.25 times 1.25 times 1.25. The enemy would take 48.8% increased damage. So you deal about 1.5 times your previous damage. In other words, if Vulnerable was a multiplicative stat, it would be about 45% less effective in this example. And Critical Strike damage works very similarly to Vulnerable damage. The stat is additive, but it acts as a multiplier. And unlike Vulnerable damage, where usually you are either applying Vulnerable or not, it's completely binary, your Critical Strike chance is a little more complicated because you have access to the Critical Strike stat, and therefore you can get up to a 100% chance but it's not really tied to the skills you use so much as the items you're wearing. Or your dot build, in which case critical strike chance doesn't really apply at all, and in most cases critical strike damage doesn't either, though a few classes do have exceptions where it will. And to make things even more complicated, if you look at the tooltip for your primary stat, say intelligence on Sork, it says increase skill damage. But this isn't totaled with all your other increases. For some reason, it's its own separate modifier, 
which is just weird blizzard things and that inconsistency I mentioned around the start of a video. This multiplier means your primary stat is quite good, but like with everything before, going from a low mount like 200 to 300 intelligence will have a much bigger impact than going from 700 to 800 intelligence. It's good to have it, but the more of it you have, the less important it becomes. And all of these things are relative. I don't think there's a single stat that I've mentioned so far where you unconditionally want to avoid it or you unconditionally want more of it. If you had 12,000% critical strike damage, it would be a terrible stat relative to just increased fire damage. But because most builds don't actually get over a couple hundred percent of critical strike damage, at least right now, it remains relatively valuable. Next up is Lucky Hit, Diablo 4's proc coefficient. Lucky Hit effects can provide damage, buff you, reduce the damage enemies deal, or even proc free skills. Lucky Hit Chance is kind of a wild card, and I'm not going to get into too many details about everything it can do, because that would require me going over every single effect for every single class and item. Just in general, keep in mind that increases to Lucky Hit Chance are all added together, but then multiplied by the base Lucky Hit. So let's use the Sorceress's Avalanche. It has a 20% chance to apply versus vulnerable enemies. If you had 40% lucky hit chance, that's 20 times 1.4 or 28% chance. But each skill has its own multiplier to trigger lucky hit. So if a skill had a 100% chance to trigger a lucky hit, it would still be 28. If it had a 50% chance, that would go down to 14. Whereas if it had a 200% chance, congratulations, now it's 56. Now that I've covered a lot of the stats you'll be encountering commonly on gear, what about skill enhancements, passives, and legendary aspects? Well, in this case, it's much easier because additive effects are denoted with a plus. These are all added with like effects. For example, this can involve stats as well. Attack speed on gloves can be combined with the increased attack speed from accelerating aspect. They're both added together, and then that number is applied as a multiplier to your base attack speed. Attack speed is also a perfect example of a situation where you can have too much of a good thing. Both attack speed and critical strike chance are capped at 100%, so anything beyond that is wasted. On the other hand, when it comes to skills, passives, legendary aspects, and paragon boards, multiplicative effects are denoted with an X, and these are all multiplied together independently. To use a quick example, the aspect of control on Sork gives 35% more damage to stunned, frozen, and immobilized enemies. So if one status is active, this is 35% damage. But if it's all three, it's your base damage times 1.35 times 1.35 times 1.35, or about 2.5 times your normal damage. And to throw another wrench in the works, some of these multipliers act on stats rather than on your damage itself. The Devouring Blaze passive, for example, gives 60% more critical strike damage versus burning, and 150% more critical strike damage versus immobilized at rank 6. To my knowledge, only one of these effects can be active at a time, so when you immobilize an enemy, your critical strike damage is multiplied by 2.5. This multiplicative aspect means each new modifier you add makes all the previous ones even more valuable. And that's why most builds get a majority of their damage by stacking glyphs, legendary paragon nodes, legendary aspects, and passives. It's also a large reason why you go from dealing damage in the thousands at lower levels to dealing damage in the millions at level 100. When it comes to effects marked with an X, there's no such thing as too much of a good thing. The more you have, the bigger your damage gets. And now that I've talked about a lot of the basics and more common modifiers, this is the section of a video that I'm dreading. All the weird things that may not directly increase your damage, but also are really important, so I should be mentioning them. First up, what is overpower? Unlike many other ways to scale your damage, overpower isn't a multiplier. Instead, it adds flat damage based on the sum total of your life and fortified life. Overpower is an effect that has a 3% proc chance. No, this isn't a lucky hit, so you can't increase it. It's weird, and if you want to know more, read about it over on Max Roll. Most builds that actually scale overpower do so with a skill that has an inbuilt trigger effect for it, because the 3% just isn't frequent enough to rely on. It's kind of like Diablo 3's area damage, but a little bit less of a nightmare while still keeping me up at night. Now as a note, while I have used several ubiquitous examples, vulnerable and critical strike damage, certain classes have affinities for certain mechanics, 
things like the defensive stat Fortify, the offensive stat Berserk, or the damaging stat Overpower are all scaled better by some classes than others. So I may not have covered quite all of your class-specific mechanics. However, you should be able to apply the same logic that I've used in this video, because knowing your class mechanics gives you a better understanding of how to scale damage in Diablo 4. Another interesting stat is cooldown recovery rate. Cooldowns are often a big part of a build's damage and defenses, and this stat brings them up faster. Now, I haven't really looked into the formula for cooldown recovery rate, but to my understanding, having 100% would not mean your skills have no cooldown. If that is the case, I'm sure Blizzard will find out at some point in the future why that's a really bad idea. But cooldown recovery rate isn't a direct damage multiplier. It just means you have more options, more defenses to survive, you could hit your survival button more frequently, or more buffs to do bigger damage, higher uptime on a buff that might be conditional, or potentially you get to use that ultimate skill button, which feels really awesome more than once in a fight. There are even some builds that fully min-max around cooldown recovery. Maximum resource and resource cost reduction are two other stats that aren't necessarily direct multipliers to your damage and may not apply to all builds, but can be critical to your ability to do damage. If your main skill costs a resource and you have no resource to spend, you can't cast it. Therefore, resource cost reduction makes it easier to spam those skills. Max resource gives you a bigger pool. Some skills and effects use this for damage scaling, such as Necromancer's Bone Spirit. Max resource also makes effects which restore a percent of max resource even better, such as the lucky hit on gloves. Though for that, not only will you need max resource, but you're going to need some lucky hit chance as well. While I know this video has primarily focused on damage scaling and the character building context around it, I did want to talk quickly about defenses. Because in some ways, everything I said before when it comes to damage scaling works for defenses as well, but in reverse, or maybe in inverse. Additive defensive bonuses would be incredibly powerful because if you could get to 100%, that would give you total damage immunity. And to be fair, I haven't looked into defensive scaling as much as I've looked into damage scaling. So take the following with a grain of salt large enough to probably get diluted in an ocean, but make a thimble at least as salty as Twitter. As far as I know, all reduced damage taken modifiers and all less damage taken modifiers are multiplicative. For an example, Reduced damage taken while injured caps at 43%. If you have three of them, that would be 1 times 0.57 times 0.57 times 0.57, meaning that you take 18.5% of normal damage while injured, or granting you a total damage reduction of 81.5%. This avoids the problem of all these powerful modifiers stacking up and rendering you immune to damage, because if it was additive, well, 43 times 3 is over 100, and therefore you'd be completely immune. As a couple other rules of thumb when looking at defenses, armor is a very powerful stat, but its effectiveness is inversely proportional to the level difference between you and the enemy. The higher level an enemy is relative to you, the less effective it is, and the higher level you are relative to an enemy, the more effective it is. Resistances kind of suck and will hopefully be buffed in a future season. For more on why resistances sucking matters, maybe check out my video talking about the problems faced by the Sork class. And more life is good, but percent life is more valuable than flat life, because it seems like flat life is calculated at the end step after all your percentages have been applied to your base. Though that could be wrong and feel free to correct me in the comments. If it is, I'll try to remember and pin the comment. So now that I've gone over how all the different damage modifiers in Diablo 4 work, hopefully you have a really good framework or idea of what to look out for and how the answer to what's the best way to scale damage in D4 is, it depends. But here's a few rules of thumb to keep in mind. Stats on gear tend to be additive with themselves or other like-kind modifiers, such as all increases being additive together. Many additive modifiers are denoted with a plus symbol in brackets. And the more of an additive modifier you have, the less effective each point becomes because it's like salt being diluted in the ocean. Though like salt being diluted in the ocean, this doesn't really matter until you get a lot of that stat. Now, if a stat does not specify how it's scaled, it's probably best to assume it's additive, though that's not a perfect analogy. Now, after they're added up, most stats multiply an effect, i.e. all of your damage increases multiply your base damage, all of your attack speed multiplies the rate at which you deal damage, all of your vulnerable damage multiplies the damage taken by vulnerable enemies, 
this, to my understanding, means that it also applies to your friends. So if you stack a bunch of Vuln damage and your Barbarian friend comes to smash a thing's face in, he will be way more effective at smashing. And crit damage multiplies the damage you deal when you critically strike. Again, as a reminder, crit chance and attack speed are capped at 100%. Last but not least, don't be afraid to make do or look for alternatives. Just because something could be best in slot doesn't mean it's the only way to do things. And if you don't have access to that best in slot option, it's better to find a workaround. Your workaround might smell slightly burnt and definitely be stuck together with duct tape, but hey, your build functions, and if you just chase best in slot and refuse to use anything instead, you'll probably end up with a completely non-functional build. When it comes to additive modifiers, you generally can't go wrong getting your main stat, attack speed, vulnerable damage, and crit damage. Though remember, dots can't crit, so that is a notable exception. Now, when it comes to passives, legendary paragon boards, secondary glyph effects, and legendary aspects, they tend to be multiplicative. Multiplicative modifiers are usually denoted with an X in brackets. This makes them far more valuable. Try to get as many as possible, because the more you have, the more effective every previous modifier you had is. Also remember that conditional stats need to be compared with their uptime. How effective your vulnerable damage is depends on how often during your damage or burst window the enemy is vulnerable. But ideally, as many of your modifiers as possible should be up 100% of the time, or as much as you can manage. Now, if you want to truly min-max, like I said before, you're going to have to break out the spreadsheets, but that level of math is, well, not my special. So I'll leave it to people who really want to dive into the numbers, like Rax and North War. Because I've noticed the in-game tooltip tends to lie to you a lot. It likes to lie almost as much as ChatGPT. And so hopefully over time, as the community theory crafts more, we'll get a little bit of clarity on how certain stats work. If I end up finding out that any of the information or the assumptions that I used in this video are incorrect, I will try to remember to update it, though that gets difficult as more patches stack up. So if there's ever a huge shift in how damage is treated in D4, I'll probably just make another video, because this is actually my second attempt at this. I really wasn't happy with the first attempt, so as this goes live, I'm going to be taking that down and kind of replacing the old one with this. Uh, hopefully this is more informative and accurate. With that said, I'm curious, do you have any more questions about how to scale damage in Diablo 4, or really about any other D4 topics? Leave them down below, and who knows, there might be a video answering your question at some point in the future. Get subscribed and ring the bell so you don't miss that. But that should be about everything for today. Before I go, though, I just wanted to take a moment to thank my patrons and channel members for their continued support. Direct support like this is super important to my ability to make videos at the highest level of quality possible. If you want to support, links down below. And if you're looking for something else to watch, there's a recommendation on screen right now. Maybe you're curious about some of the other mechanics in Diablo 4, such as how the blacksmith works, or what to do in a Helltide. Well, I've got videos on both of those topics. And if you prefer reading to watching, one of the best places to learn more about Diablo 4 mechanics is Maxwell GG. I'll link to some guides down in the description. With that said, thanks for watching, hope you learned something, and I hope to see you again sometime soon.